Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sembrano. I'm Evan Klosky. Host of Locked on Rays, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. You can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, and online at fanstreamsports.com. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked on Rays. And you can email us, lockedonrays at gmail.com. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Green Room. Download the app and join Ulysses and I this weekend to get in on the Rays action and conversation. Uh, Okay, it is a Friday, which means we are proudly joined by WTSP Channel 10 Sports Director Evan Klosky. And Evan, uh, I got to say, you are a spoiled, spoiled man working (laughs) in sports media in the Tampa Bay area. You have the Tampa Bay Lightning, you have Jane Castor, you have Stu Sternberg, you have Wander Franco, you have 17-year-olds from Hillsborough High School breaking Usain Bolt records and running in the Olympics. You're going to have the MLB draft coming up where there's going to be a bunch of local kids getting drafted. I mean, you, you, you have an endless assortment of topics to dive into there, there's not going to be a slow slow sports day did i even mention tom brady come on yeah <laughs> We're, i'm gonna get like a good week off and then training camp starts for the bucks and yeah. and you know with the lightning and the boat parade finishing up on monday uh it's it's nice to uh have some nice nights where i can sit back watch the rays and, and enjoy some baseball games without stressing out about a hockey match <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm repping, uh, not repping the Lightning, I'm repping uh, Dallas, Dallas Stars. Star. Wow. I, I'm not a fan of the Dallas Stars per se, but one of my best friends is the marketing director for the Dallas Stars. So got to rep the uh, swag every now and again. Uh, now and again, got to got to give a shout out to Ben Bishop and some of those guys. By the way, Evan, uh, of course, with the Lightning uh, getting their second straight Stanley Cup, uh, just wanted to posit this question to you covering sports for as long as you have. Uh, what do you consider the most impressive or challenging feat? Is it a Super Bowl, a Stanley Cup, an NBA championship, or a World Series? Uh, I, I think I, I want to say a man, it's, it's Stanley Cup and a uh, Super Bowl are, are kind of mm. right there. You know, baseball, no salary cap affords a team an opportunity to really, you know, look, we know the Rays are really successful. You don't need money to win a World Series. The Dodgers have poured money into their team, and it took, uh, you know, finally last year to break through after continuously pouring more money. The Yankees, you know, they spent money like crazy, and, you know, 2009 is really all they have to show for it after the, you know, the heart of the the three-peat that they pulled off. Um, but, you know, with, with baseball, you have a little bit of cap flexibility, and basketball is such a superstar sport that you can put LeBron James on, you know, the New York Knicks next year and, and they'd be the favorite. So, you know, football is a team game where, um, you know, I think QBs heavily dominate your success, but also your window, your window mm-hmm. in football is so finite. Um, and I think it's very similar in, in hockey to managing that, that salary cap. And we're going to see that with the lightning. It's, you know, people need to get paid. The cap hits you and people get older and rinse and repeat, run through the cycle. Ulysses, you have a uh, take on this? I I don't think you can put football up there just because of what we saw last year. I mean, as soon as Tom Brady signed that Bucks agreement, they just jumped to like being a favorite and then ended up winning it. Uh, It it was crazy. Again, you know that I'm not the biggest football fan, so um you know I, take I'm that opinion i was like a little bit iffy on on football because quarterbacks really do dominate the conversation yeah Look, I feel I, like i'm gonna go yeah yeah ulysses i don't know i'm i'm sort of leaning towards baseball considering the 162 the, the 162 difference in ballpark me. dimensions yeah. and also the fact that fewer teams make the playoffs on a percentage basis compared to those other sports yes. like those other sports basically half the teams make the playoffs can you baseball. I, I feel like in football, you can be a, a, an under 500 team and still make the playoffs. Is that, is that added, not true? They added that, that seventh playoff spot. So it's possible. And, and yeah, you have weaker divisions. I mean, look, at, I mean, in baseball, the NL East is sort of going to be like that mm-hmm. weird division where, I mean, the, I mean, the Mets are over 500 by, by a, a good margin, not, not like a super healthy margin. They're not anywhere like the, the AL East, but 
Um, you know, that's, that's sports in general, right? You have divisions that are stronger than others. You have right. divisions uh, yeah. that are more stacked than others. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of prevalent in all sports. Okay, let's get to the big topic. It seems like, Evan, every time we have you on, there's some sort of big controversy uh, or storyline leading up into the week. And we have another one. It is the debate over the seven inning no hitters, combined no hitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, should MLB count what the Rays did on Thursday against the Indians as a no hitter in the record books? Or what is just your take on this whole situation? There's been a lot of conversation about this. So, so my opinion, it's, it's a no hitter. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a seven inning no hitter. I think it's right. It's that distinction. I, you know, I think it goes down to the record books as a no hitter and there's an asterisk and I, you know, you just, you have your list of no hitters, you put a little star there, seven innings. That's, that's where I stand there because I can't even begin to tell you the amount of no hitters and perfect games that have been blown up with the final six outs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're almost, almost, we're like, what is that? Uh, we have, like another 20% of the game. I mean, we're a little bit past, you know, 67% of the contest when we hit the seventh yeah. inning. So, the hardest outs to get to. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a no hitter because right. right now this baseball season, we play seven inning games. Yeah. That's the way that the rules are functioned. So it meets that distinction, but it's not the same. And again, that, that's not even like our opinions. Uh, Pete Fairbanks after the game was like, you know, uh, he, he even went so far to say that you don't really enjoy it unless it's one guy chucking nine innings and getting the job done himself. That, you know, he felt no, he didn't, he felt no sense of attachment to the no hitter once that, that game ended and, and he was the one on the mound ending it. Um, you know, other people in the clubhouse said that, you know, they celebrated it and they loved it. And as they, as they should, it, I mean, big picture, I don't even care about the no hitter. They spent 14 innings with the Cleveland Indians and gave up four hits. So right, right. that's the, that's the big picture here. But yeah, and I, uh, I think it's, it's, and, and I think that's normal for most fans, right. To, to, to feel like there's more pizzazz with one guy chucking it than, a combined no hitter of, of course that's going to be the case but look mlb says seven innings you played seven innings you didn't allow a hit that's a no hitter i mean that, you played with the rules that you were given you didn't say hey you know what uh we're gonna play this game seven innings no that was manfred and company that said no nah, this game will be seven innings you didn't allow any hits it's a no hitter and, and personally like if we go back to madison bumgardner early this season who pulled it off you know i feel bad for bummy I feel bad for the pitcher because he's got his A plus stuff and I'm sure he wants to go out there and throw another couple innings so that he can prove to himself that he did it, you know, that he right. went the distance. That's uh, it's, it's just, it's calling the in between. Like t there's a tech yeah. technically, yes, it's a no hitter and that shouldn't be taken away. Then in the other side of things, we have the emotional attachment to the no hitter. And I have a hard time believing that fans were going crazy for a seven inning no hitter featuring five different pitchers. You know, I just, I just right, don't right. think that the fanfare was there. And I don't think that you were emotionally invested in the no hitter as if it was going into the eighth and the ninth. I think, I think then it would have. Yeah, sure. Let, let alone five guys. Like one guy runs 26.2 miles, finishes a marathon. That is a terrific feat. If yeah. five guys each run five <laughs> miles a piece and don't even finish the thing. And you say, Hey, you ran a marathon. Not really though. Yeah. And it yeah, was against but, the crap Indians lineup. Like the, the bottom half of the, the order was triple a guys. Like, okay. What about this? What about a relay? A, guy, a relay race. That's yeah. multiple guys. And that's still worth it. I mean, just because there's more people there actually. Yeah, but you can't I, say you completed a marathon. You can't no, say they, you're they, a marathon they, finisher. 
Sure, they can't, but there is a relay race and there are multiple people involved in this and it's a Okay, team. how about this? It's a relay no hitter. That's what we call it. A relay no relay seven inning no hitter. Kevin but running but if you were running a relay race in a marathon, it would be a marathon relay relay race. There'd be a distinction yeah. in there. So I complete a marathon. What what type of marathon? Oh, it was a relay race. Like, oh you threw uh, oh, 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 did you did you go to distance on now oh, seven? I can argue the pizzazz and the fan interaction towards the the, the no hitter if it's a combined and no and, and non combined all day long. And I agree with it 100%. There is more fanfare and you feel more attached to it as a fan when you see one guy chucking it. Yeah. There's no discussion there. However, if we just look at the facts, at the actual number data, 312 no hitters in the in, in history of baseball, 312. Small mm -hmm. trivia. You guys care to to guess how many combined no hitters there have been in the history of baseball out of those three hundred and twelve? I'll say one hundred and five. Thank you. I would say Kevin? I would say very few. I would say probably less than twenty because I'll just say less than twenty. I feel like if you're you're getting one guy because you want that one guy to finish the job instead of take him out well, and do what probably Kevin Cash or somebody would do and take a guy out in the eighth inning or ninth inning and not let him. You'd be it. correct there out of 312, there have been only 13 combined oh. no hitters. That's only 4%. See, I, I, route. I thought you were positioning it to be there was a ton of them. I should know five. So what I'm saying is the facts, the numbers tell you that it's way more difficult to see a combined no hitter than one guy chucking it. I'm not saying that it's better. I'm not yeah. saying that, but I'm just saying, the statistics are there to show us that it's more difficult throwing five guys out there and all of them I, just be on I, point. I, I and wouldn't not say it's up. more difficult. I would say it's more of a technicality thing. It's not like I, I don't see how having five guys chuck seven innings is more difficult than Matt Garza throwing nine innings and not allowing a hit. I find that because very difficult. One guy can to, blow it up. One guy. One guy can just get a, a blue single. If one guy has it all. Boom. He's just throwing dimes. Perfect. But one guy had an argument with his wife. One guy has a cramp. One guy didn't actually go to the bathroom before warming up and he's just holding it in. Like I've been there just, before. Yeah, oh my the gosh. margin of <laughs> error is too small when you just keep using that bullpen. The margin of error is too small. But that's the whole MO of the Rays is they go to the bullpen at the fourth or fifth inning because it works. It's not like special. It's just a strategy thing. But, it's oh, special my, when it's no hits. Yeah, my, my thing is though, it's like, is it impressive if you if you bake a cake and then, you know, you're dividing the, the, you know, the, the instructions being like, oh, like Tommy over here has to dump the cinnamon in. Make yeah. sure you like land the cinnamon. You know, I think that when you're when you're portioning off the no hitter and you're you're diluting the responsibility and saying, all right, well, you have to just handle three outs. And sure. while it's very hard to do, you, you know, you make a great point with with the no hitters. It's it's no easy feat to continuously have guys huck up zeros yeah. across the board. Um, and, and and those should be respected. You know, I nine inning no hitters are combined, whatever. You know, those are no hitters, undoubtedly no hitters, whether they're shared or not, you know, emotionally just will never be the same. You know? Correct. Yes, I just didn't agree. think it was all that special whatsoever. Like, would we really consider a guy hitting for the cycle if two of his hits were off Brett Phillips, if a double and a home run were off Brett Phillips, do you still consider that in a blowout game? Would you still I don't think that's a hey, fair so-and-so so hit for the cycle? I mean, we I don't think it's fair. like, you know, nitpicking at lineups, though, because even if they're triple A guys or whatever you might have you, I mean, Jacob deGrom, you know, goes down for a rehab start and gives up a hit. You know, it's not like and by the way, the guy that gets to rehab, like the guy that gets a hit off the Grom during his rehab assignment deserves to get called up immediately. But <laughs> point, uh, you know, it just these guys are professionals, whether they're going to be in triple A or the majors they still have the ability to hit the ball. And if you, if you throw one and right down main street, they're going to smack it on you, you know? Exactly. Okay. Uh, Evan, what was more impressive? Uh, what happened in game two of the double header, the five guys combining for the no hitter in seven innings or Michael Walker's appearance in game one, six innings, I think one earned run to, uh, allowed. What do you say is more impressive? Um, man, uh, that's a really great question because I kind of, 
draw positives from both. I mean, okay. I would I would say I lean the tiniest margin to Waka because with the amount of injuries these guys are having, like Waka is on thin ice to keep his yep. his spot on the roster. <laughs> like this yep. guy needs to prove every single outing that he has an ability to get out, not give up a, a boatload of runs in a short period of time and prove that when everybody gets healthy that he can maintain on the roster. So I think yes. for Waka personally, that like having that type of outing now the last two or three times out, he's been spectacular. So that's a good trend to see. Uh, on the flip side of things, we just witnessed, you know, the previous week on the road because, uh, you know, the, you know, they're like, they're different beasts. It's so funny. At the beginning of the year, we were talking about the Rays. All they do is win on the, the road and they can't win mm -hmm. at home. And now we've kind of flip-flopped and now they're just the worst team on the road and, and <laughs> best team at home. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. We just watched this bullpen just get decimated on the road and to see them throw up zeros for seven innings. Uh, that is a great sign of, of a team that we fell in love with during that, that monster winning streak in May, that, that is at the core. And, uh, you know, the, a great article a, a week or two ago on, on Joe Madden, um, what he, when he came back to the tribe and talking about the, the secret sauce for the Rays, he says, pitching, yep. it's pitching. It's there's, yeah. there's no secret sauce. We all know that they, they develop pitchers and, and that is how they succeed on the bump. Okay. Ulysses, I have to get this straight and get you on the record on this. So what you're saying is what the Rays, the five pitchers, McHugh, Fleming, Castillo, Whistler, Fairbanks combined for that seven inning no hitter. Is that, would that have been, or is that more impressive than say, if Colin McHugh just went out there and pitched all seven innings and it was a no hitter? It's statistically more impressive to have combined guys statistically more rare three. not more impressive yes. yeah i mean well when something that rare happens it's impressive I mean, not at least necessarily in but there's the but it's it goes to what kevin said before is that you know we live in a time or still live in a time but predominantly where managers refuse to take out their guys when they yeah. have a no-no so the reason it's rare is because the guy who starts it is always finishing it 100 you know, getting into a time where where managers really are starting to say screw it i don't want to blow up my guy's arm like johan santana you know yes 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 that one hit, hit that one hits me personally no i think i'm a fan too so i would rather watch a no hitter thrown by one person but i'm not going to discredit 130 years of baseball history by saying something that happens only four percent of the time doesn't mean anything no i think it's it's still impressive all right Let's change gears here. <laughs> but El Bruhan, but El, look, we should be positive. I don't know why we're arguing back and forth. The race swept the Indians. <laughs> They're in good position leading into the all-star break. Uh, but El Bruhan. We're cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but El Bruhan got the promotion and call up and debut on Thursday. Yes. Uh, it wasn't just about no hitter talk, but Vidal Brujan buried into the lead. There was the fact that uh, he played a couple games there. First, Evan, uh, your evaluation and thought on his performance so far and your general expectations for him the rest of the year. And I'm going to give that, but I do want to say one thing behind the curtain. A uh, funny story was I was at the, the lightning game uh, before game five and you know, I have everything prepared for the Rays highlights for the, for, you know, game one. And mm -hmm, I'm like, oh, right. let's, use, let's use game one and we'll talk about the doubleheader through there. We're about uh, an hour away from me going live. And then I have our main anchor, Ryan Bass, come to me. He's like, oh, look, the Rays threw a no hitter. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I was like, I got to, <laughs> I got to worry about this now. I got this whole game five. I got to worry about this. So it was just, it was just funny. Like, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit of just, my like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I guess yes. I was like juggling everything. I'm like, you yeah. had to throw a no hitter today. <laughs> um, but yeah, Bruhan, um, you know, honestly, like he looked really comfortable and, you know, he didn't hit, he didn't get a hit in the second, uh, the second part of the double header, but I was really impressed with his fielding. This is a guy, the Rays, um, you know, over time have proven that they love utility guys. They are a defensive powerhouse for a reason. And that is because they can mix and match dudes all over the field who are competent 
and can help provide the best lineup possible for righties, lefties, situational, whatever it might be. And Videl Brujan is a, just like Wanda Franco, who we might see all along the infield. Uh, Brujan is going to be infield outfield. I mean, they can put this guy mm-hmm. anywhere. And yeah. he looked tremendous diving play at second base uh, with ease. Then he had that tough play by um, uh, going into the fans, essentially, or going closer to the wall, uh, getting closer to the seats, and was able to track that ball down. Uh, first, you know, first hit gets that RBI single. We don't have to stress about it, which is what yep. we love with rookies. So yes, uh, I was I was impressed. You know, uh, I know Wander Franco has been falling on some hard times after an electric debut. Having said that, uh, better days are ahead for him. And also, this franchise is going to be a lot better with Franco and Bruhan playing consistently. I, I truly believe that. Honestly, yeah, all that you said, I agree. But for me, watching him steal that bag with no <laughs> with no issue whatsoever. I mean, it should have been called an indifference, defensive indifference. Um, it, I mean, standing up. And that's a guy who knows his talent and he's going to exploit it. I love dynamic players. Kevin does too. I know that you too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do too, Evan. This is a guy who's going to be explosive on the base paths. And that's exactly what... I think the Rays need more of just that feeling on the basis of, you know, if the Rays are the best defensive team out there, because we've seen other teams just be so sloppy on the field. If the other teams are, are, are this sloppy already, you know, what would make them even sloppier knowing that you're going to run and knowing that you're a threat, knowing that KK is going to hustle on a bloop single, it might get it into a double. Like it, knowing that Franco is going to hustle from, from home to first because it's a chopper. I mean, those things matter. And putting another guy like Vidal in the lineup, I think it's going to do wonders for, for yes. this offense. Uh, that's something Ulysses and Evan that we can agree upon is that <laughs> Vidal brings a fun dynamic to the team and kind of lowers or betters the fact that the Rays have uh, become the, the three true outcome team of it's yep. either a home run, it's a strikeout, or a walk. Well, Bruhan's going to walk, but he's not going to strike out. Not going to hit many homers either, but he he naturally will lower that team strikeout rate and as a switch hitter just adds uh, more fun with that as well. Uh by the way though, there is some question if and when Manny Margot gets healthy, assuming he will only miss a couple weeks, 2-3 weeks with the hamstring and assuming that nobody else gets hurt, which it always seems that somebody else goes down, but there could be a roster crunch here. Ryan Thompson, uh, won't he be coming back at some point? Yeah. Margot coming back at some point? Uh, what gives? Is is this the time where Kevin Kiermeyer or somebody else is shipped out of town before the trade deadline? Look at the date. It's July 9th, people. Three weeks. That's 21 days. That mm-hmm. sounds a lot, an awful lot, uh, an awful lot like the trade deadline. Uh, something's cooking. Yeah, Some well, people are going to stop wearing Rays uniforms very <laughs> soon. Yes. We'll, we'll see. And, and quickly before, uh, you know, just Bruja, I just want to mention how awesome of a story he is. Uh, yes. Ray signed him at $2014, $15,000, uh, just weighed a buck 45, soaking wet. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, he's a remarkable story, not just for the Rays and the talent that he has, but also like his background story and, and getting to the major leagues. Having said that, I'm, you know, it's funny. I have these conversations sometimes with my mom and the Mets when I'm like, ah, oh, like everybody's going to come back. What are they mm-hmm. going to do? It's, it's ne- like, it's a great problem to have. And I don't think it's as complicated as sometimes as we make it. I think having a boatload of talent provides you options and versatility with your lineup, especially with the Rays, a team who values giving an off day to their everyday players once a week, at least. Yep. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with having that ability to also allow Margot to really ease back because, you know, as we, as we understand soft tissue issues, you know, they linger the long, you know, you, you just got to make sure that's, that's taken care of or else, you know, he's going to be useless the rest of the year. So um, providing off days, allowing roster flexibility or lineup flexibility for Kevin Cash. These are all things that factor into the depth of this team. And that, I mean, that's what the Rays pride themselves on. They're, they're deep. They are a deep roster. And 
no matter the situation in a game, they can always uh, pinch hit. They'll always make a defensive switch. They'll always put Brett Phillips on the base paths. They have a lot of things at their, you know, in their toolbox. And I'm not worried about people coming off the, the IL to, you know, crunch numbers. And yeah, I mean, the trade deadline will come up and some guys might be traded for a bag of peanuts. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. A couple things there. So Vidal Brujan, as you mentioned, Evan, great story signed for 15 K out of the Dominican where he was uh, five foot seven and 145 pounds soaking wet. Is that deserving of a standing ovation builds himself up into the oh organization's my. number two prospect, yeah. according to Let MLB.com. If we're going we to go. give Wander Franco, Franco a standing ovation, I'm getting it's some totally different. Then uh, again, Wander Franco is back to back highest rated baseball player. Only four other dudes have ever done it out of those four dudes. Uh, they're pretty much all on path to be hall of famers. Uh, if not being right on the cusp of a hall of fame. So there's a, you have, to, you have to understand the moment. Different. Yes. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, we all love Ruan. We don't do it for all rookies, but Wander has been kept in the minors forever. And it was the one thing that Rays fans were so desperately wanting and they finally got it. So, you know, it just, he's a special talent. And I know that he hasn't lived up to it in his first few weeks in the bigs, but it like when he starts going, he, he's a guy. If you have fantasy, a fantasy baseball team and you have an owner that has Wander Franco and he's sick and tired of him, snatch him up. Snatch. Because <laughs> that guy is going to have a heater. It's coming. It's going to be glorious. Thank you. Ironically, I have, I have ironically, both Wander yeah. and Yow. <laughs> Ulysses has both of those guys on his roster. You'll be seeing a trade request coming through the pipeline pretty soon with that. <laughs> Uh, how about this, uh, Evan? Yes or no question. Taylor yeah. Walls and Vidal Bruhan will combine for a higher war than Wander Franco. Franco, when all their careers are said and done. So Walls when and Bruhan, you combine their done. war, and it's greater than Franco. Yes or Franco. no? Okay. No, Franco. Guesstimate. What? What's your? Throw out a number. Uh. Oh man, it's mostly because I don't think Taylor Walls is going to have this illustrious career. No offense to Taylor Walls, his his war is going to be predicated on his defense. His defense is phenomenal, but uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I think there's a healthy healthy margin. I, I would say at least double digits. I, I think I think Wander can create a double digit gap between that. Ulysses, I I don't know exactly the number. I mean, 10, 10 to fifteen. I'll say say just conservatively. But yeah, I, you know, I quick math. It's so I would say a quick math. I would say Taylor Wallace has a 15 war career. Um, I would say <sighs> Vidal makes it a 25. Right. Okay. So then what? Uh, 40. Wander could hit 55 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in the same ballpark. I said yeah. like 10 to 50. 15. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think double All digits right. is, is fair. 10. Yeah. If everything goes well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I'm gonna dis- I'm gonna disagree with both of you. I think Walls and Bruhan combined for a higher war than Juan wow. and Franco when it's all said and done. By the way, Taylor wow. Walls' father follows us on Twitter, so uh, throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's think, get. To- let, let me let me reiterate. I think yes. Taylor is a great kid. Same here. Tremendous ball player. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he log jams with the Rays, so it's it's more so like. Willie Adamas, like I, I probably have to see Walls on a different team where he has more opportunity because I just, you know, they, they mm-hmm. gave him they gave him like three weeks. What are you supposed to do in three weeks? I mean, it's if we, I, don't, like, I don't know. I think uh, Taylor Walls is going to be. Uh, you're looking at the next Joey Wendell for the race. That's Ooh, I love that. Just I love saying. that. Gap to gap defense, a lot of things there. Underrated. Underrated yes. is Taylor Under- Walls, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, let's get to baseball trivia. Evan, you're chomping at the bit to throw us a trivia question. So uh, we'll enlighten you and throw something out that's, there. That's right. So in the past 10 years, we're going just a decade here. All right, three pitchers for the Rays have had an extra base hit. Who are they? Three pitchers have had an extra base hit. I'm going to go with Nathan Carnes. 
That's right. He hit a home run. I think he did it against the Nationals in D.C. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with... I think... Did Price do it? I'm going to go with David Price. He did not do it. Okay. That was a Carnes was a good one. Thank you. I thought, I thought that was a t- I thought that was a tough one to get. One Ulysses one, knows one's really obvious if you think about it. Ulysses knows Ray's baseball history probably better than anyone. I'm not even kidding. Like he should work <laughs> for their PR department. He should be sending well, out you, the uh, the press releases and so forth. I'm gonna uh, now. There's pressure. Um, I'm gonna go with Andy Sonnenstein. Nope. But that's a great name. That's a hell of a name. Yeah, I haven't you. heard that name in a while. <laughs> oh, man. Un- under pressure now. Uh, this was Kevin's technique all along. This is his strategy. <laughs> um, two strikes, two strikes. Okay, think pitchers, think pitchers. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to go with Jeremy Hellickson. Nope. Damn. So, oh. so, te- so technically, Brendan McKay is, the, is one. He oh, hit a home my. Run. I God. told you it's obvious when you think about it. And uh, then the other one is Alex Cobb hit a double. Okay. That's your boy. boy, Ulysses. You should have known that. Ulysses like <sighs> is in love still with Alex Cobb. I would have thought you would have gotten that one. <laughs> I know. That's on that's my bad. That's my bad. Oh my yeah, goodness. Um, years, three extra base hits for raised wow. pitchers. Do you remember who the two raised pitchers who got a hit this year are? Dick Mountain. <sighs> That's right? a good one. Yeah. Grandpappy Dick. Yeah. And uh, who is the other guy? Who's the other Actually. guy? Oh, was it? No, it wasn't Glass Now. Glass Now just like stood. St- oh, was it Yarbrough? It was Yarbrough. No. No? This one's, this one's a tough one. They've played in Miami and they've played in Nationals Park. He was part of the trade this year. Fire Trevor Richards. Rasmussen, Tre- Not that one. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Think about who the Rays got. Fire Rising or Rasmussen? Rasmussen. Rasmussen. Wow. Oh, huh. I did not see that game. Yep. Yeah. I must have I did not see that out there. Bad. <laughs> Honestly, Evan, to your point I in question. Of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Regarding your uh, original question, I was going to say Edwin Jackson just because he had played for so many teams and figured that, you know, I'm sure he crossed across the national league at one point and it's and possible that, that he too. did it before 2011 oh yeah. okay that's what i think oh, andy okay. sonnenstein too i think he did it prior before 2011 too i'm just gonna give uh, myself credit there for 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 just trying okay i have I'm trivia just, yeah. for <laughs> i'm just gonna tap myself on the back here there you and, go uh, very good great <laughs> job play, play my own narrative my own truth and uh you know who's gonna, who's gonna tell me that i'm wrong Look, Evan, I'm just going to live my best life. This is what I'm about. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put you both on the hot seat now. Trivia time. There have been by four. The way, by the way, I just want to fact check you. You are correct on Sonstein. 2009, he had a double. So that's Let's very go. impressive. I just want to give you that. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, okay, there have been four Grand Slams all season by the Rays. Can uh-huh. both of you combine a combined <laughs> trivia question yeah uh name all four guys you get as you get the credit Randall. as if if only if only one of you say Randall okay Randall. here you go um wendell lau um zanino strike one Damn it. um oh, i know wendell lau those two are definite um who else hit a grand slam? Oh, Randy Rosarena. Good one. Three. Um, mm. um, he should have hit two this year. That's when he dodged yeah. one, too. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Francisco Mejia. Wow. Wow. Against okay. the Blue Jays. Very good. Now Very that good. is deserving of a no hitter designation that he did the work all by himself i didn't do anything i was sitting on the bench the whole time perfectly put yeah no that was great yeah mejia was actually the first one on may 21st wendell may 24th randy rosarena was third on june 13th and of course this week brendan lau did it against the indians on july 5th uh all right thirdly let me throw out a very brief 
trivia question. So the last uh, all-star game slash home run derby at Coors Field was at, uh, was in 1998. Looking mm-hmm. at the home run derby, I want each of you to name one player that participated in that home run derby in 1998. Sammy Either- Sosa. Uh, incorrect. It was, um, um, geez. okay. I'm going to go with the other easy one. Mark McGuire. There we go. That's, that, that's one right there. So now we'll see if Evan can get his. Uh, I don't, I think this is probably too late for Griffey. Um, wasn't like, didn't like Brett Boone do one or something? Or like Andrew? He might have. I, I need a guess. I, I, you can't throw out names I'll, and not I'll guess. Go, I'll, go, uh, I'll go Boone. Sure. Incorrect. Was it Anderson? Incorrect. First instinct. Todd Helton? Incorrect. King Griffey Jr. would have been correct. And he won the thing, too. Oh, I, I totally skipped over my Griff. Oh, no. Uh, I, I totally forgot that I threw out Griffey. I already, like, I already accepted that one as an L and then moved on. <laughs> oh, no. no. Yeah. All good. All right, Evan, where can people find your work? Uh, you can find my work on Twitter, at WTSP. And remember, you can go to 1010bay.com, find everything uh, you need to know on the Lightning, Rays, Bucks. We got you covered. We also put our Locked on Rays podcast every Friday on the website to, uh, to, to showcase some love for the team. And then also hit me up on, on Facebook as well, Instagram at Ekloski. Again, as I always say, 99.9% of the time, I'll always get back to you at some point. So, you know, come join the fun. Yeah, we, we, we got a ton of emails, but I just I can't get to them. We're, we're going to have to do that some other point there. Uh, yeah, great job, Evan. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yes, there you go. yes. Uh, okay, uh, that wraps up this edition of the Locked on Rays podcast. Now tell your smart device to play the most recent episode of the Locked on Today and Locked on MLB Prospects podcast. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you next week.